there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do some acrylic paint pouring and then we are going to take our panels and make a fun binder. Now this can be used with filler paper for back to school. You could also put drawing paper or watercolor paper in here and make your own art sketchbook. We got a couple pockets here that we can put stuff in and uh, it's a nice useful way to use up some of the canvas panels that you may be practicing your acrylic paint pouring techniques with. This video is sponsored by 3-in-1 brand All Temp Silicone. This is the stuff that you add to your thinned acrylic paint or your pouring acrylic paints in order to give it the um, interesting little bubbles and cells in the surface. So I'm going to share a technique today that is going to give you a very um, repeatable design and also isn't going to waste a lot of products. And it's going to give us this um, the technique here and we can basically place our cells wherever we want them. I like this because it's a great beginner technique and you can get the result that you want very quickly with very little waste. So without further ado, let's get messy and do some paint pouring. For this project, we're going to use a couple 9 by 12 artist canvas panels. You can make this book whatever size you want. Just make sure you have canvas panels that are just a little bit larger than the book you want to make. I'm using a paint roller tray for um, a work surface so I don't have to worry about making a mess and I'm covering that with a couple of plastic bags so cleanup will be nice and easy. I'm using some pre-made acrylic pouring paint but if you don't have that you can simply get acrylic pouring medium and mix it with your craft acrylic paint. I find the less expensive craft paints to work better than the artist acrylics because it's already thinner and easier to mix with a pouring medium. If you can't find pouring medium you can take white glue and water mix it together and then add that to your paint to get that fluid consistency. What I'm doing here is I am doing a pouring method where you put down alternating light and dark colors that have a little bit of a contrast to them. So I'm using teals, oranges, peaches, aqua, white, and bronze and just kind of layering them up so that I have contrast between the layers. You just want to make sure you're putting down enough paint that when you start tipping it around it will cover the surface. Now generally with typical paint pouring you pour a bunch of paint in a cup and then you dump the cup down but I find a lot of paint goes to waste that way and um, I don't like to waste materials especially acrylics because wasted acrylic is basically just plastic that's going into the trash so I try to conserve a bit when I'm doing that and there's really no, need, no reason not to um, as far as I'm concerned. I'm only making a few panels here too so I didn't really have the use for a bunch of leftover poured paint. So you'll need a, um, a fairly good coating on your canvas. You can use a straw and kind of blow on the paint if you want to to help spread it. You can use a scrap of paper um, or cardboard and drag the paint around a little bit if you want to. Um, just make sure you get that whole canvas panel covered. If you find that you need a little bit more paint or you want a little more contrast as you're going, then go ahead and drip some of those colors where you want them. Like in that large area of aqua, I thought it'd be nice to break it up a little bit because it would make it a little more interesting. Just let your, um, your preferences be your guide. Now I just grabbed a piece of cardboard out of my recycling bin and used that as a little spreader just to spread things out to the edges. If I had gloves on my hands, maybe I'd just use my fingers to spread it out to the edge, but um, that's just going to help make the the canvas kind of wet so I can tip the rest of the paint and let it slide on over. Now sometimes acrylic paint pourers will first coat the canvas with like a thin layer of pouring paint and that will um, help the paints that they put on top slide around. So you can find the technique that works for you. Um, I just kind of like to play around until I get the color balance that I'm looking for. Now, if you want to get cells on your paint, you're either going to need to apply some silicone um, like with a toothpick or add it into one of your colors or all of your colors. I found that particular method to be a little bit, um, well, unpredictable. So I'm going to show you the method that I like to use. Now, I am using the skewer first to spread out some of my paint, help guide it a little bit. Um, I wanted some interesting lines. Here I'm actually blowing on that, and then I realized I should just get a straw because uh, you can't see what I'm doing when I'm, when I'm blowing it like that. And plus, I can't really direct where I want the air to go. But when you have a straw, you can really push that paint around and get some really fun effects. And um, you can do that as little or as much as you want. Now, the more you do it, the more your paint's going to mix up and you might lose some of that beautiful effect like I did here. So I'm adding in some more orange just to um, bring back a little more contrast and make it a little more interesting. Then I'm just blowing little puffs of air to, um, to help it move a little bit. 
and I'm really starting to enjoy the way this is looking. Again, you can tip it and you know have it slide a little bit and get just the look you want. But now I think I'm ready to put some cells in and cells are like the little bubble shapes that you see. So I'm just squirting a little bit of that into a little ink well that I have. And I'm just gonna use a skewer, like a, a toothpick or a barbecue skewer to um, just kind of dab it where I want it. And I did first try shaking it on, but then I realized I wouldn't have any control over where it went. So just by touching it with the tip of my skewer, I can like dab on, I don't know, six or eight little dots of, um, of silicone and get those nice cells. You don't need to use a ton of silicone. Um, and you know, this might eventually make the paint flake off and you know, in the distant future, but I'm using this for a book cover. So I'm not really worried about that. I really like the amount of um, cells and bubbles I'm getting so far. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of dip this straw in and kind of shake some on as well, just for a random variety. But look at that, that looks really pretty. You will need to let that dry completely before you glaze over it or use it for any projects, but you get the idea of how it's going to look. It's just going to be a little less shiny when it's dry. And here through the magic of YouTube, you can see the pour where it's almost, I'd say 75% dry, less glossy, and you can kind of make out the cells a little bit more. I think it's really pretty and it would make a great book cover. I recommend letting your covers dry for a few days before you go to craft with them. I've had these dry for a couple of weeks and I thought that'd make a really pretty book cover. One has more of a marbly look and the other one's got more of a, swoosh, a smooshy look, but I thought it was really pretty. Now to cover up the messy backside and to make a pocket, I am just using some duct tape to adhere some, um, no, uh, I'd say they're probably six by eight, just um, uh, report pockets. I guess, you know what they are, report card pockets. I got a big box of them from the school when they were, uh, when they switched to doing report cards a different way. And I am just taping it down with some red duct tape to go with the red in the cover. And um, there you go. I'm just pressing it down with a bone folder. And I did decide to take a little knife and slice the top of the duct duct tape where the opening of the envelope was so I wouldn't contract the size of the pocket. Uh, but that's pretty much it. You can put more duct tape over the pocket if you want to, to make it more decorative, which I did end up doing, um, or you can leave it the way it is. If you add more duct tape, it'll make it more durable. To make the covers, I am just putting some filler paper down on the notebook and or on the covers and marking with a black marker where the holes are. Then I'm using a heavy duty punch. This is a crocodile to punch the holes. And I am doing a couple holes side by side just overlapping so I could you know fatten out the holes a little bit and there you can see um, the binder rings that I'm using they're just simple two inch binder rings from the um, from the dollar store I think you get like a pack of 12 or something for a dollar very inexpensive and you could probably fit a whole pack of filler paper in there if you wanted to so I was checking that out to see how I liked it and I liked it quite a bit but I thought boy I I think I'd like to have a spine on that. Um, I started to make a spine with that pretty chevron duct tape, but I couldn't figure out a way where I could conceal the rings and have it open and close um, well. But then I decided I would take that duct tape and I would use it to cover the pocket to make it more durable and to give it a little contrasting pattern, which I think is really pretty. So I put the binder rings back in and loaded up my filler paper and that's all there was to it. It makes a really sturdy binder and I think it would be fun to keep my notes in um, for you know different plans that I'm making or maybe the kids will want to use it for school. I'm not sure, but it makes a really nice binder and you could obviously make it for art supplies if you prefer. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please check out our sponsor, 3-in-1 All Temperature Silicone. I will have a link on where you can buy it in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.